What? You felt strange on your ski vacation because you were high? I'm ashamed. Oh, you were at a high altitude. Oh, well, that is very, very different. Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 600 posts, videos, podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with the lovely nurse Amy, I'm the author of the Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, also the Ebola Survival Handbook, and the designer of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get together for a little survival theme fun. This is America's favorite yakadoodle TD bird, and this guy, well, he needs no introduction as always. You know, in any survival situation, we might find ourselves having to relocate from a home at sea level to a retreat or bug out location in the mountains. When this becomes necessary, it's likely you're gonna be moving fast. The rapid change in elevation will, for some, cause a condition known as altitude sickness or acute mountain sickness, AMS. This occurs as a result of entering an area with lower oxygen availability and reduced air pressures without first acclimating oneself. Altitude sickness occurs most commonly at elevations approaching 8,000 feet above sea level and it's aggravated by exerting oneself. Now, some normal people may be susceptible to AMS, or altitude sickness, at lower elevations than others. If you have no choice but to make a rapid descent, close monitoring of every member of your party will be needed. You will usually see patients present to you with symptoms similar to a hangover or influenza. If it's mild, you'll commonly see fatigue, insomnia, dizziness, headaches, nausea and vomiting, lack of appetite, tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate, pins and needles sensations, especially in the hands, and shortness of breath. Although altitude sickness is usually a temporary condition, some patients may develop complications in the form of edema of certain organs. Edema is accumulation of fluid. In altitude sickness, it occurs in special places like the lungs, called pulmonary edema, or in the brain, called cerebral edema. Either of these conditions can be life-threatening. Those who will have major complications of altitude sickness will present with the following. Severe shortness of breath, confused and apathetic behavior, cough and chest congestion, not nasal, cyanosis, which is a blue or gray appearance of the skin, especially the fingertips and lips, loss of coordination, dehydration, coughing up blood, loss of consciousness, and in occasional cases, fever. Like many illnesses, the best strategy against altitude sickness is prevention. Choose your route to your retreat so that the ascent is as gradual as possible. Don't attempt more than 2,000 feet of ascent per day if you can help it. Ensure that your personnel do not overexert themselves as they ascend and provide lots of fresh water to prevent dehydration. Avoid the consumption of alcohol on the way. Treating altitude sickness first requires rest, if only to stop further ascent and allow more time to acclimate. If available, a portable oxygen tank will be useful and help the patient feel more comfortable. A medication commonly used for both prevention and treatment is acetazolamide, also known as Diamox. It has a diuretic effect, which means that it speeds the elimination of excess fluid from the body by urination. Therefore, it will help prevent the accumulation of fluid in the lungs or brain. Acetazolamide is superior to many other diuretics in that it also forces the kidneys to excrete bicarbonate. By increasing the amount of bicarbonate excreted, it makes the blood more acidic. Acidifying the blood stimulates ventilation, and that increases the amount of oxygen in the blood. This effect may not be immediate, but will at least speed up recovery. Usual dosages of acetazolamide are 125 to 1,000 milligrams a day, usually starting a couple of days before the planned ascent. The medicine can serve to prevent as well as to treat altitude sickness. Other medicines known to have a beneficial effect include the blood pressure medicine nifedipine and the steroid decadron, especially in those people with edema in the lungs or brain. When you visit your physician, notify him that you are planning a trip into high elevations would like to avoid altitude sickness. Usually you'll be given an acetazolamide prescription in case of emergency. The other medications mentioned will be harder to get though, as they have more side effects.
Now there's some evidence that ginkgo biloba may be helpful in the natural prevention of altitude sickness. A small amount of an extract of this substance has been shown to allow the brain to tolerate lower oxygen levels. Native Americans have used ginkgo for acute mountain sickness for centuries with beneficial effect. This has been Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Oh my goodness.